call the Public Safety Building Committee meeting to order Monday, August 5th, 6.30 p.m. I did not hear from Mr. Moorhead, or officer. I did hear from Mr. Barry that he was running a little late. We'll hear a quorum. We'll get started. Uh, first action item is approval of meeting minutes from July 22nd, 2019. Um, I'll just start with a few quick comments. Item two, um, we had nine present that night. But it says the motion carried 5-0 with two abstaining. So we just need to bridge that gap. Um, what is that? 3D bullet point two. Uh, Heidi's last name is spelled wrong. 4 bullet point one. Cells should be lowercase. Um, and then 8. Uh, it says one example. I, I add the word hypothetical um, to that. Those are my edits. Anyone else have anything else? Nope. All right, I'll move. We accept the minutes as edited. Is there a second? For a second on Mr. Goodney. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? All right, that carries 6 0. Uh, next item uh, project timeline, including sequencing of changeover of operations. I'm going to save the project timeline discussion to the vertex and context team in terms of um, where you think we're at in terms of next Tuesday um, and what you think any gating issues are there. Um, I will bring the committee up to speed on a few items and then turn it over to the chiefs for how they're planning. They've had slight change in their transition of operations that'll let them outline. Um, I'd say about every day there seems to be one or two items that seem to come up that tend to take a lot of both our consultants' time, but also Chief's time, Mark's time, my time. Um, I would say the largest issue, in my uh, opinion, based on some of the things have opened and shut, so I don't know that we're going to spend a lot of time on that, but uh, today uh, it came to light that um, there was some difficulty with the aerial truck uh, getting um, the right amount of turning radius out of the site, um, out of the emergency site. Uh, Chief Achilles um, had been asking for quite a while to get down there, but had also been respectful of um, the team and the time that that would take, and also obviously not trying to tear up the pavement with the largest truck the town owns. Um, some pictures were furnished uh, to Mark and myself. Um, we kind of rallied a little bit on this afternoon. There were some ideas out there. Um, I would say hopefully between tonight and tomorrow morning we'll have kind of a proposed um, modification to that um, to make it just easier. Uh, we'll include buses into the testing of that as well to make sure that there's no issues from a school perspective. But um, I don't think that impact necessarily a substantial completion. Um, the more time sensitivity is the fact that they're paving this weekend uh, and we need to resolve it before then. So um, safe to say all hands are on deck on that particular item to make sure it results in a better um, outcome than the initial test, but I just figured I'd raise that to the committee because I think that's the largest item that has kind of come to light that needs to be dealt with. Is there any, any, anything else, Chief, you want to add? Not unless you have any specific questions or... I guess I'll open up to the committee for any questions on that specific issue. Is that the only one with an issue, that truck? It's the largest truck, right? And the large truck. Yeah. We didn't do a dry run before we paved it. With our truck. It's, it's got binder down right now. But it's getting right. a final payment on Saturday. What would be involved in changing it? You want to pull the curves? Yeah, pull the curve right out. So again, we never thought about driving the truck down the road to make sure it fit before we put a curve in? Well, I guess I'd say it's a milky part discussion we were chatting a little bit before the meeting that so in the beginning um, there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of design work and committee work spent on figuring out the configuration of the driveways um, several years ago we went through multiple different configurations of the driveways and during that time we uh, looked at different configurations that had the, the center median strip curved line back further and then up at the street and ultimately, it was decided to bring it closer to the street because that was one of the ways to, to eliminate some of the confusion of the public trying to figure out 
concrete driveway to drive into. So that's how that ended up there, and that's where this, that's why the sign is where it is. Um, the engineers confirmed that using the uh, department's bus turning template and the, the fire truck template at the time, that you could get into and out of the site, and it was tight, and it was always going to be tight because of the restrictions to the wetlands and the playing field. We only had so much room to make it work. Um, and then as the trucks exited the site, you would have to swing wide to then pull back into the right-hand northbound lane. So I don't think anything is not working the way that was originally designed. I, I think what we're seeing is that now that they've tested it, it's tight. And they'd like it to work better than the way it is working. And the question, in my opinion, I haven't talked to you, Chief, so I apologize. But in my opinion, we are at a juncture in the project where we can potentially make a change with some cost, obviously. We can make a change, and should we make that change to benefit the way the fire department's going to use the site? I guess that's my interpretation of where we are. And I think what we need to do is have to pull the curve extend the binder, reset the curb, um, and preliminarily we think that we would have to, uh, the engineers done a rough calculation thinking that there's probably going to be a minor change to the amount of drainage and that may have to go back through, and hopefully administratively, but it may have to go back through um, the regulatory boards that would have jurisdiction over that just to make sure that they agree and are okay with the change. Um, you also may know that the extensive process we went through to get through planning involved their third party consultant who already um, had questions about the two driveway approach. So I'm not sure given that, whether or not pulling the curb back would, in the minds of the planning board, cause them to think about reopening an actual hearing to discuss it because of that significant nature of that intersection. So I, we could, could all sit here, go outside, and, and take a look at it, come up with a way that this will work. But there may be other pieces here that we need to think about before we do anything major with that. So just to be clear, you brought the big truck down, tested it, and it has a hard time making a right turn without going into the other lane. And I can, I, I can explain a little bit more. Um, and I can, I'll go back a little bit. Before the binder was down, I, it would have been a, uh, I don't think we would have had a good experience with taking the truck on. And the curb right. is a really big significant factor. Right. Prior to the curb going down, you wouldn't have had a good understanding right. of where the edge of the road So the binder was down first, and then we waited for the curbing, and we had talked uh, over the last month or so, just taking the largest truck we have, which is uh, the tower, up onto the site. Um, it did take a little while to do it because of the heat that we've experienced, we didn't want to start tearing up the binder, but also the amount of work on site, we didn't want to impact the other areas. So this past Friday, knowing that our tower was going to go up for some repairs this week, uh, we felt it was appropriate in working with the, the contractors. There's a lot of work up near the building, so we're still, we still want to see the turning radius going around the building. but. We felt that the driveway, uh, although it was designed for the truck, we wanted to see where it would really fit. So uh, Friday afternoon, we took the tower truck up. We backed it up the driveway. I came down the driveway on the emergency side, and actually the curves are fine. You know, that was one of our areas of, we, we're going to cut a little of them, so we're, gonna, we're trying to make it as straight as possible. Um, so two areas that we have concerns, coming out of the driveway and heading northbound on Cordeville, and then heading northbound on Cordeville and taking a right into the, the site. So uh, we did it really slow. We stopped the traffic, and I had one of our better operators. Uh, we took pictures, and coming in north into the site and taking a right, uh, we did pretty well. Um, our front bumper or the front of the cab or the driver's side front extended over that median a little bit um, and um, we feel maybe a remedy next to that hydrant on the right curb was maybe just angle it so that we wouldn't 
we don't want to pop a tire. It'll be really pricey to keep on popping the truck tires. Um, but we also realize that during inclement weather and snow banks, that will narrow up a little bit. So we felt that it was doable, nice and slow, but over time, um, and especially different weather conditions, we could, ha we could get some little conflicts. We did drive it out of the driveway and headed north on Cordoville. And what we realized is um, the back two tandem tires to make them clear that curbing in the me median, the truck goes across the road and the cab is over the fog line next to the southbound lane, on the southbound lane next to the cemetery. So all the way across the road. It's all the way across the road. And um, again, two concerns. One is we realize that based on that, we're probably not going to just turn into the northbound lane. The truck's large. And even our normal trucks are going to go over the center line a little bit. I thought that was just a, a little too far for my comfort, also knowing that we're, we're basically blocking the road and hoping that everybody stops. If there's during inclement weather with snow banks, again, that affects that. Um, and the type of curve that's there, again, uh, we could pop tires. Uh, so uh, I want to make sure that we did it before the final pavement went down uh, and look for some remedies uh, that would minimize, uh, one, damaging the truck, but also make it safe so that we, uh, especially heading northbound, which we have a lot of uh, structures, facilities, residents, St. Mark's, Bay School, uh, that's how we're going to go to the schools. So our tower is going to go up front a lot, northbound, that um, we were going to be able to do it in, a, in a, a better method. I don't think we can eliminate going across the center line, uh, but there's got to be a, I think there's got to be a better way, especially for the, our, our, work, our deployment model and uh, that type of truck. And we're going to have that for some time, so it's not like we're not going to have that truck. So. Gotcha. Just can't imagine what the CTA will be charging for change order now and for time. Do they have some more time on this? Well, I think, Jeff, what's your view on how this impacts substantial completion versus just paving schedule? Obviously, they need paving to do substantial completion, right? And it's a little challenging. I guess there's two components. One is occupancy and operating the building, and the other is achieving sort of code substantial completion, enough to give it a certificate of occupancy. Um, Would it be cheaper I at this know, point? I don't think there's any, and most of you think about it, I don't think there's any prohibition of opening the building with just binder no. on. <coughs> Not like I recall. So you We've could, done it before. You could omit the final paving in that area. Um, and but you'd have a bump. But you'd have a bump going down and a bump coming back up if you chose not to pay the rest of it. But you'd have to pay a good portion, otherwise all the manholes would be high everywhere. And you still have an issue that they'd be in a building and you'd have to close that. Some when point we do some point, you would have to do that. Now that gets back into the occupancy thing. If they actually take occupancy and that's not done yet, then that's going to impede their emergency egress from the site, which would be a good problem. But like you said, if we come up with certain ideas, that could trigger different boards and committees getting back involved. Well, that's that's my biggest concern, and I was searching and that adds a lot. Just time. to remember what we, we had angry. discussed, we actually presented four different options, and ultimately we all chose the option that we have today, which is basically the original design option, as a mechanism to try to prove to the planning board that we're considering everything and try and figure out what was best for public safety from a single driveway option all the way down to this segregated option. And, um, and so that's my concern is that, you know, reopening that discussion, I don't know where it would be so, necessarily. Yeah, I agree. So, we're gonna try to resolve this, hopefully come up with ideas in the next 24 hours. But I guess my question to 
for the community's sake, right, and for anyone that's questioning why this is coming up eight days before, what did the, the studies, turning radius, analysis show when you did this for purposes of the planning presentation and is what the chief is encountering now, like actually in practice, are those answers, are those results the same pretty or are much. they different? The results the chief has is pretty much what the turning radius shows. If the truck is going to be tight coming in and it's going to pull out further into the uh, southbound lane to make the, the right hand turn. Um, and when we, and that was on the old design when they did the original turning radius. We had to redo it on the, the current layout. It's basically the same. So I would say for all intents and purposes, pretty much the same. The computer's showing pretty much the same as what you guys did. Did, did you have discussions with Chief Morrow about how tight that was? I don't have anything written, but I believe we did discuss it at a couple of design-related meetings to talk about how this two-driveway option would work. I'm not sure if we actually ever sent him the turning radius diagrams, but I think we talked about the, that it would be a tight, you would swing out into that other lane. Um, the right-hand turn, because it was done at a time when we had a wider design opening until um, conservation made us kick that emergency driveway out, which is why it cranks the way it does. <coughs> we used to have it go straighter. It came straighter out to quarter and it cranked up. Um, that may, you know, the original one may have been a little bit better, but it wasn't it wasn't much. I mean, the driveway was always a fairly tight width. So, worst case scenario, say that we have to go open hearings and all this stuff again. Would it work to be in Framingham on Route 9, their station, they just have a trigger light? just before they back in and back out. Would that be helpful for you guys? I don't know, the cost of just putting, a, not a regular like time traffic light, just a, like a uh, truck operated traffic light that you could turn it on so they, you, get, you guys get your room to make your swings out wide, swing in tight, well, something like that run. Is that hundreds of thousands of dollars, less money than to redo this thing? I think we already have them in, in the plan. Have warning lights yeah. to begin with. We have warning lights. So could we, how much more would it be to make that trigger light so you know, it stops traffic to give them the birth they need to get it? It probably doesn't stop the traffic, it just slashes a warning that a truck but is coming could out. Could we, we have, how much more would it to make lights? it a working light that it's red light? Of the entry in the oh, no, no, no. I mean, a signalized intersection would be well out of the ballpark for what we're talking about, yet modifying. And it's still one of my concerns is that even though it stops the traffic, we did that the other day with staff, and it's still you have to traverse that. Yeah. Um, it's a slow traverse, and any variation in, in traversing that, we could uh, take out a tire. And again, the northbound turn onto Cordeville, yes, we're going to cross traffic, but. Our bumper goes over the fog line, so if, if that's not plowed, per, you know, kicked back all the way, in the winter we could have a problem getting out of there. So, the so other, it's not just a stoplight. The other option that I was thinking around was, and this obviously would be a change to the, what's there, but it wouldn't change the physical lines on the ground. You could swap, swap. You could pull out the curve for a low curve, or no curve, basically flush granite. Um, concrete behind the curb and then uh, this is in the median and then put a curb line further back um, so that at least the, the tire issue goes away and so visually you know, it looks like basically yeah, visually it still looks like the same thing planning approved but the curb lines are down at the surface of the road rather than and that's kind of like uh, on Parkerville when you come out of the school is that median that is almost flushed, but it's concrete with grooves in it. Mm -hmm. So that, that I think those that concept or what you see in rotaries, small rotaries that have mountable areas. Um, and after this meeting or at whatever is appropriate, I, I would work with um, the, the architect and on this. So That's, because I'm I'm gonna work. Th work this is a half baked sort of analysis. Yeah. I don't think it's fair to keep. Peppering them with questions, I think 
what they owe us is an update within 24 hours to, you know, we've steered the ship back on its course, or if we're dramatically off course, we're going to have to have another meeting. There's just no two ways about it. I think we can sit here and ask questions and yeah. hypothesize. I, I just don't see it unless someone wants to challenge me on that. I just don't see it being fruitful to anyone here. Well, but is it only the big biggest truck that's a problem? We don't know if it's the next biggest truck that's a problem, too. We haven't tried that one. Um, we haven't tried the engines. I think uh, the site gets good practice with that with some of the larger dump trucks. Um, so we could do it with one of our another truck. <clears throat> but I, I watching the traffic uh, with some of their larger trucks offsite, I think that would give a good indication of what they're experiencing. Just, just a quick question. I'm sorry, came in late. So, so when the tower goes up, what's the issue with the with the curbing? And I guess what's the, as it is right now, it just we need to make it wider on those sides. Well, I, I we I, I work in Waltham, but we have a similar um, uh, tower as the South Road. So the so curbing. Down the median, basically, to miss that with the, the rear dual wheels, the cab is and the bumper are starting to go over the fog line in the southbound lane. So, so the, but the island, you think, would be the solution to lowering the island down and making it. If we could drive over it. Guys, we're moving on. That's about, that's about moving on. Yeah. The extent of the 12 hours or whatever, six hours okay. it's had to think it's, about. This literally came to light at like 10 a.m. this morning. Okay. So I think it's important to keep the committee updated. Yep. That That's why it's in chairman's update. And I think you know, we owe you an I'm available update. this week if you need it. I appreciate it. Uh, so hopefully we don't have to meet, but um, you know, if we have to meet, we'll meet and we'll chart the, pro the process forward. Um, the only other thing that I'll ask uh, the chiefs to just quickly outline is irrespective of this matter, just the decision that you've made in terms of E911 cutover, because it differs from what you articulated last time, and I think you gave forewarning that it may, and then what that looks like in terms of when you would occupy the building, potentially. For a multitude of reasons, we've uh, determined that September 3rd would be the, uh, the better cutover date. Uh, hopefully they'll turn the building over for a substantial completion, and we'll start to move uh, some of our operation over there, but um, we plan to fully cut over. Um, we'll start our move-in process, but uh, we'll be fully cut over and operating as soon as uh, 911 and dispatch and the cell block go live. So no difference, but the date is moved on that. And sure. we we would wait as before and wait till that cutover occurred, and we'll subsequently move in. We'll start moving some. Uh, non-essential or support equipment on earlier, but uh, it will take about three days uh, on or about the third, so it might take into that week to move our operations over, uh, but they're predicated really with the, the, nine, uh, the 911 cutover. And Chief Paul says, have you gotten a date yet for your inspection for the cells? Uh, Thursday. Oh, nice. I believe that would be any other questions on that update from the Chiefs? Uh, the only other thing under monthly project-related updates, and the reason I had them go first, is we then were able to kind of anchor in on when we would do what I'd call a soft opening. Um, given that the departments likely won't be active in the building until in and around fully active until about Monday, September 9th, um, we've decided to tie it in with the September 11th ceremony that's traditionally hold, held to kind of do a small uh, ribbon cutting and still hold the, the traditional uh, memorial that would be held on that day um, in memory of the event. So uh, the, the plan is that we'll finalize the time here in the next uh, couple of days, but the morning of the 11th will be a very short um, opening ceremony. There'll be no tours to the public or anyone like that, anything like that. A few quick speeches, and then the departments will continue their operations for another couple, a month, about a month and a half before we do the um, larger event that's open to everyone in the community in the end of October. Um, and those events are starting to come together, looking at roughly a 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock timing on that uh, day at the end of uh, October. It's the 26th. 26th. Thank you. Any questions on that? 
All right, uh, change order ownership is the next item on our agenda. Um, Jeff has made a um, offer. Um, I think there's some more discussion that needs to occur, especially given that still some some items um, you know that need to be resolved. So I think what I'll uh, recommend to the committee is that we table that discussion for um, a later time, just until we can kind of get through some of these items that really are needed to hold CTAs deep to the fire for next Tuesday. Any questions on that? Yes, okay. Um, proposed change orders from general contractor. We actually have none uh, this week. Hopefully that stays true. Um, I did skip though, sorry. Uh, owner's project manager monthly um, update. So other than the driveway, uh, I don't know, uh, Vertex team and Context team, I think where I'd start your update is kind of um, anything that you see impacting the next Tuesday's substantial completion date and what the path to resolution is there and then anything more broadly that you think the group should be aware of. Currently right now we have not been informed of anything that should interrupt next week's um, completion, but um, I believe it when I see it, to be honest with you. Um, there's a lot of work going on right now. I'll let Bill give the update as to what other additional loom, like we said before, the uh, binder, the top coach going down on Saturday. So we had a little bit of an issue with golf, gonna have to be closed on Saturday to get that done. Uh, and all the other work going on the other side. So if you wanna just give an update. Yeah, so just to your point, in terms of anything, uh, you know, that uh, we deem that might hold up the completion. Right now, my, my concern um, is less of the physical items that are being done. You know, the finishes are going in, furniture is getting put in. Um, there's no egregious, you know, punchless items um, that we've discovered or context has discovered over the last couple weeks. Uh, right now, it's the systems. Right now, it's getting startups going. So there's been a generator startup uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. Right, is going to be the HVAC system startup. Um, and then once it gets started up, assuming it goes smoothly, there's no issues, they have to balance the system. Um, I think that is potentially something that, you know, could, if the building's not conditioned properly, uh, I don't know if this would be entirely true, maybe Jeff can help me, but if the system isn't balanced accordingly to house people, I, I think that's something that could potentially hold that item up, or in terms of being able to be substantially complete. Uh, but outside of that, um, you know, I think in the discussions with the Chiefs, getting them to move their move-in date back, um, because there is a lot of punch list items. Um, so they're just going to want to give them a little bit of time to fix the paint, fix some floors, uh, but nothing major um, in terms of the physical aspect of the building, just the systems and when they get started and balanced. From my perspective, um, I agree with both of them. Um, I agree especially with Kevin's comment that I'll believe it when I see it. But um, <laughs> the, the major thing from our perspective is the engineers, which I have uh, I have made the contractor aware of this I think a couple months ago, that there's a list of requirements for our engineers to provide an affidavit, which is required to give building inspector so she can give us the certificate of occupancy. Um, that list is, was transmitted to CTA a long time ago. It includes a bunch of reports, which includes things like the balancing report and some other things that the contractors have to provide to the engineer so that they can prove that things have been done in a certain way or the building meets certain tests and standards. Um, it's always a challenge to get all this stuff uh, and many jobs, it's, it, takes a little while before it can get done. So for a CTA to pull this off, we haven't seen much of that list come back to us yet, and we're a week away. So they have, a, as it has been said, a substantial amount of work to do to be able to get us that list. I'm not under any illusions that that could come Tuesday morning, the 13th, um, and that the engineer would have to read it all, review it all, and turn it back around again. They are made aware of that, but I've also made the contract aware would be incredibly unfair to the engineer to do that to them. Um, basically say, we're done. If the engineer can only just review 20 pages of the documents and turn around with affidavit in two hours. Um, that 
that being said, we'll do everything we can to make sure if that does happen, it gets turned around and the building inspector gets what she needs. And it's just good. so everybody's aware, we, we have had inspectors come out from GGD and they've actually had to leave yeah. because <coughs> things were not ready <coughs> by CTA. And so they know very well that we, we have done everything that we promised them that we would do to get this, you know, we have extra people in to help with the punch list, we have extra people working extra hours to get this all done. And there's been several occasions now where we show up, they're not ready, the guy's gotta go back. And he's got to come back another time. So, so we're keeping up our end of the bargain. So Jeff, if that holds true, right, and you get all these affidavits on Tuesday morning, I think, I mean, I'm only one person, but I don't think any of us expect you to rush through that because I think the onus is right. on them. We want quality. Before, right? And if that date slips, I think we're contractually protected well, that for other reasons. Exactly true. And I, I think we would endeavor to responsibly complete the work. You know, if they gave it to us six in the morning and it took three or four or five hours, and the engineers had the time and they're available and it could all get done, great. You know, if it doesn't get done to the next day, I don't think we fault the ownership design team for that type of turnaround. Any questions? Chase, I know you said the last meeting, did we get the official notice from CTA yet? We haven't received any requests. But they uh, they have a letter from uh, drafted by the town's attorney, so. No response from that. I think we feel pretty comfortable with the position the town's sitting in to protect our interests. John, did I see? Yeah, I'm, I'm not comfortable with the content of the conversation or in the, the statement that says, however, the project team is still concerned about CTA's ability to meet the August 13th substantial completion date. You guys have done this before. We haven't done this before. Given the state of the building, where it's in now, and what the deliverables that still have not been delivered, can you give us any more insight as, I mean, we're eight days away, the likelihood that substantial completion is going to be done on August 13th? Personally, I'd say no. Agree with that. You agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I've said this to you guys before many times. The number of times we've asked CTA to meet a deadline or to get something done by a certain deadline, the times that they've actually achieved it are pretty slow. Okay, so if August 13th is not the substantial completion date, what would be in your mind based upon the current status of the building? Quite honestly, as like Bill said before, the startups, the balancing, all of that, everything has to fall into place for other things to be accomplished. I mean, is it gonna impact Chief Paulus's September 3rd date? Should he be thinking of a different date? I, I don't believe another date beyond September 3rd would be necessary. The, the issue that I personally have with September 3rd is having the punch list and other items that need to be addressed interrupting their operation. Fire department is different than the police department. Fire department, you can have administrative help during the day. We can walk around with somebody. In the police department, you can't just willy-nilly bring anybody you want in, into Chief Policy's office and be like, these guys want to work in this room right now when you've got three guys you just locked up. That's not how it works. And we've explained to CTA several times, and it's in the meeting notes, that no one and we mean no one is allowed to just show up. And they thought, we're here today to do, do our list. And we're going to turn them away. Because I can't have Bill sitting there 24-7 just waiting. You have to schedule it out. You have to get permission from the police chief. I'm sure both of them will be very accommodating. But things happen. It's my, life. My, my question is, it seems like the chief has got September 3rd as yeah. the date on his calendar to switch over and be up and running at that location. If that is not a viable date based upon where we are in the construction process, I think it'd be better to know that sooner rather than later. Well, I, I believe it's a viable date, September 3rd. I, I don't think we're gonna be going, not able for them to move in past September 3rd. I think they'll be able to move in. That's, uh, that's 20 days. John, it's gonna get very expensive for them. Real quick. I know. So, it's going to become financially not feasible for them to keep dragging their feet for, for 20 days. But I'd like them at least to put a stake in the ground so we know where they're at on their, their 
CTA on substantial. CTA we tell you it's next Tuesday. And we're going to have another meeting tomorrow morning, which they're likely to say next Tuesday. So we expect that okay. by the end of next. I mean, yeah, my I, I'm not at all concerned about to a point where the technical definition of occupancy is achieved has been achieved. But to Kevin's point, and that's all before September 3rd. To Kevin's point, I think the goal that we're all looking at and us is how much of that punch list can we get done before that September 3rd date. So the answer to your question is I don't think it okay. has to change. But it's a matter of how much disruption it really cause beyond that point of trying to get CTA to get to 100% fully complete. Any other questions on that? It's the only other thing that I don't know that fully is resolved is in the schedule that CTA provided on time this week, um, they highlighted two items for, they didn't know whether it was gonna be done, but it was up to the local jurisdiction to decide. And I know there were some emails back and forth between the chief and Lori. Where do we stand on that? Because you just both kind of said that temp temporary certificate of occupancy seems roughly on track, but those seem like items that they may try to pin back on us. If, well, I think we have given, the, the two items are the remote enunciator in the dispatch room and the uh, hardware for the electrical room door, which uh, was discussed last Monday um, with uh, CTA. Um, I'm a little unsure as to whether or not CTA has actually gotten all the components they need to do that. We're just going to give them a CTD mark to sign it. We're going to give them a CTD to get that going. Um, but they should have already known that that needed to happen. I just don't know if they've gotten the hardware. So the quite, question in my mind is whether that hardware will arrive by Tuesday. Um, but on the remote enunciator, that's something that was in the documents. So it's not a surprise to them that they should have owned it. Now, whether they saw it or not, and if there's a question, they could have brought it up sooner. But uh, that's completely on them for not ordering it earlier. And I think we're in complete agreement between my office and and Chief, that those two items are going to be required to get the certificate of occupancy. Um, but ultimately, in my email, what I was trying to get across was that, regardless of my opinion, it does come down to the authority head and jurisdiction, and they get the bottom say. So, whatever Lori and Chief want to do, that's what we're going to do, anyways, whether I disagree with that or not. Um, and so, both of those things need to get done before occupancy can be achieved. So I guess um, stay close to your email in case I need to schedule a meeting between now and next Tuesday um, for any of these issues, if it requires committee involvement. Um, with that, I'll reiterate there's still no proposed change orders uh, for this meeting. Um, and the list of kind of outstanding items has not changed as well, which is also a good thing. Um, I'm going to move into invoices. Vertex did not furnish an invoice yet for July, so we'll see that at our next meeting. Um, other vendor invoices per Vertex recommendation, I'm planning to abstain this vote again too, so in the interest of moving all of them together, I'm happy to have you lead that discussion. <laughs> it's, <radio. laughs> it's like a million dollars, <laughs> No, I'm, I'm not abstaining from the contractor. Okay. I'm just the miscellaneous, unless we separate the invoices out. Once again, we have a few. W.B. Mason, $879.30 for furniture. And we have another one from W.B. Mason for $100,167.03 for furniture. And then Rogue for our fitness equipment, $8,145.04. And UTS, there's two for UTS. One for $4,160 for construction testing and one for 1050 for construction testing, totaling $114,401.37. Good question. That first one, the W.B. Mason, uh, was that the 879.30 on the bottom of that inventory? It says 934.26. So it's, it's, it's my understanding they have they got a bunch of invoices that were delivered to different locations. 
and that they consolidated them all. So we had, I think, three last week, and th these are the two missing ones from last week. One got sent, some got sent to the town hall, some got sent to the site. Yeah, but on this invoice that you read at 879.30, the total due is 934.26 on the bottom of the invoice. That's I, think we'll I think we'll pay on the right column, the approved column. We're approved. I'm just looking at their bill. They built sales tax. Yeah, it says sales tax removed. So we appropriated okay. 119 and we're paying 114. Gotcha. Motion. Motion to accept those as presented. Second. All those in favor? Everybody second it? You, you second it? All those in favor? Motion carries. Yes. Um, stand. Seven You're going to yeah. Seven, oh, so seven, it's not unanimous, yeah, sorry. <laughs> seven, 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 zero, one. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, before we move on from other vendors, um, one item that came up with last month's invoices is obviously the town accountant receives the invoices and reviews them. One thing is she checks to make sure we're not paying sales tax. And um, there was a typographical error in. John's letter in terms of um, the invoice included freight, but the letter didn't include it. Um, so she wanted a revote of, of last meeting. What I would like to do is kind of spin it a little differently and just say, uh, I'll make a motion that to the extent the town accountant finds a clerical error in Vertex's um, uh, cover letters that uh, she processed the invoice in accordance with the rules and regulations that she's uh, bound by. Is there a second? Yep, second? Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> any opposed? All right, so that carries unanimously. Um, now we'll go on to CTA's requisition. Um, as a reminder, we're only re uh, approving the first item, uh, which would be related to the public safety building project. So I will make a motion that we approve CTA's requisition 14 as presented. Is there a second? Okay. Second by Mr. Goodney. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? All right, so that carries unanimously. Um, project budget and schedule update. I'm not aware of anything that we haven't discussed that needs to be discussed. Uh, next item was a, a late addition, but it was included uh, in some materials that I sent out to the committee. So there was actually, Mark received it and just Kindly forwarded it to me. Um, a memorandum from the facilities director looking for approximately $45,000 um, to furnish the building with certain equipment. Um, my personal view is I don't have any intention of moving that uh, request tonight, um, and I think it just requires a lot more vetting um, before the committee take action on it, uh, including working with the chiefs to understand. Um, you know, it wasn't my intention that we were going to be buying all new cleaning equipment for the building. There may definitely be some needs, but I would like to kind of hear from the chiefs. I don't know who has what duties. I know there's a third party uh, cleaning company as well. Um, I think the biggest items that I guess I would like to at least give Mr. Parent some direction on is there is a request um, for a uh, epoxy floor cleaner, one on the fire side and one on the police side. Um, to me, it seemed a little disingenuous to buy two machines for one building um, and was hoping that maybe between Mr. Parent and the Chiefs they could figure out some way to share the equipment. That equipment wasn't cheap uh, for anyone that looked at some of the detail behind there. So I don't know that we want to go do a lot of back and forth other than maybe validate if anyone has any strong agreements or disagreements with my path forward, but I would like to see a more, more comprehensive um, thought out package that also articulates what they're bringing over as opposed to just because we have a bright new shiny building why do we have to have a bright new shiny mop in our spots. But we did want to take care of it. He's used yes. a pretty frugal guy so we should hear him out as far as and it's a big building so I can see why you want two machines and maybe two people doing it at the same time. So I think we should at least hear him out. Right. So I, I did get the Should've impression been. that it had been fully vetted by the Chiefs. I don't know Chiefs if you've seen a lot of this. I'd be willing to discuss at least couple parts that if you want to hear it is on the sure. machines um, we were look the epoxy floors need regular cleaning to maintain them uh, we went through uh, I went 
through with John, through the whole facility. It looked like a uh, walk behind our smaller um, floor cleaner, like you see in uh, Home Depot and some other places, uh, would be appropriate for the police side, especially uh, Sally Fort, the garage, and the cell. We could use it on the apparatus floor, but the apparatus floor, we estimated would take probably five times as long to walk behind. And we were trying to figure out a way that um, we could, uh, what would be the most efficient way to clean that floor on a regular basis without taking the whole day. And the, the larger unit would be stored on the fire side and be used on the fire side. We felt the large unit wouldn't really work in the tighter areas of the police side that had smaller rooms. So uh, it was my suggestion if it was available to try to get a better machine, a large machine that we could be more efficient on that. Specifically because it has four drains, we do not want to use a lot of water. And um, we felt that machine, like you, a riding machine that you might see in, in some of the larger box stores would be more appropriate. So on that, and we did have a discussion of cleaning materials, if you will, and supplies. Um, I know on the fire side, in the only area that's going to be covered by the third party was the admin office area. The dorm area, the upstairs, and the whole apparatus floor was uh, the fire department. And currently, we uh, don't have enough supplies uh, to transfer over from our current station to that station. Um, and I agree with you, it's not about new mops. It's about just making sure we have the right amount of equipment. Uh, plus, the gym, the fitness room is going to need some sanitizing equipment uh, also. So those are areas we saw from the fire side. And that may, uh, I, I think he vetted out very well with me. I didn't look at his whole list, but I felt. Yeah, and I'm not disputing that you're going to need this stuff at some point. I just kind of punting it to the advisory members at the end of the table how much of this really belongs in a bond for 25 years versus a regular ongoing budget. Oh, I agree with that. Um, so, Mark, I don't remember what he put in his budget, anything to maintain this building, whether he increased his budget. I'd have good. to go back and take a look yeah, at so we definitely work should look at that with the cleaning company. Yeah. So though I agree we shouldn't be putting So I think that stuff has to be because this committee has no authority to act on anything other than what's going on. We're not buying in. the clean supplies in our bond, I agree with that. But um, But I, I do think that there is a unique new feature to this building that we want to protect and I think that's where I'm hoping to focus kind of a lot of the discussion next time and hopefully some of this other stuff get sorted out in other areas of the town's budgets. Just one item, um, you mentioned a third party contract to clean the building. Is there a way to expand the contract such that they maintain those epoxy floors such we don't have to purchase the equipment? I mean, we're not creating a wheel here. I assume other stations have epoxy floors and whether or not the cleaning contractor can be that contract can be expanded to save costs. I don't know. Is, is the contract already been executed for this building, or is it being folded into an existing? Being maintenance folded contract? into existing. Yeah. Just, just made the exception for the at least the big one. Um, objections to kind of holding this and bringing it back at our next meeting? Nope. Okay. 
All right. Uh, next is meeting schedule. So, uh, absent any unforeseen um, circumstances, our next meeting is going to be on the 19th. Um, my goal would be to have it across the street, but I also, if the building's not ready, even if it has a temporary certificate of occupancy, we'll find another location, uh, whether it be here or um, the townhouse. So uh, stay tuned on the location, but two weeks from tonight, I guess is a very aspirational meeting uh, that will be sitting here as a temporary certificate of occupancy. I think if there's any major roadblocks, you know, I think it's my intent to call a meeting somewhere in between there. Any questions on meeting schedule? Um, under other business and somewhat, somewhat relates to uh, my chairman's update from earlier, um, I did say we had uh, Mark, Vanessa, and the chiefs and myself had a preliminary discussion about um, the uh, opening event at the end of October. Um, there's naturally going to be some costs associated with that event that outside of labor costs just to make, make sure we do it right. and. Um, so um, the chiefs have proposed um, us authorizing a budget of $2,000 um, for that event that would be coming directly from this budget. So I wanted to throw it out there in terms of, um, you know, they may not spend all that, they may get a donation to cover it, but we wanted to give a little bit of flexibility uh, if the community was so inclined um, to make sure we do this thing the right way as opposed to kind of putting it together piecemeal. I think, uh, I guess the best way to summarize the day is it'll be part tour and part, um, I'll call it activities slash um, you know, demonstrations from the departments. Obviously a lot of it's gonna be dependent on turnout. I, mean, I think that's our biggest unknown. We have no idea whether it's gonna be light turnout, moderate turnout, or heavy turnout based on weather, kids' activities, and um, any other competing events that may fall in there. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the World Series. <laughs> um, so I don't know if anyone, that was just a number that uh, Chief Achilles, I believe, had thrown out there just as a, a point of reference to optically get on the record now as opposed to presenting something on the back end. So I will um, move that um, we uh, approve to, all we can do during discussion, unless you think it's going to alter my motion. I'm just curious, does... Do we have the authority to spend that kind of money on something like that? Mark and I had a pretty uh, detailed conversation. I mean, it's about not building it. the building. It's it's basically a public relations event. Excuse can we well, spend? Well, we, can it's we, a project cost. Yeah. It's up to it's up to the committee how you want to handle that. My goal is it ends up being zero, but I think. I think it will be zero before we're done. Yeah. Um, who's actually in charge of the day? Who's doing the detailed planning? You two. Oh, we had our first meeting today. Um, Vanessa was taking the most notes. <laughs> so Vanessa, Vanessa is in charge of reaching out to uh, what I'll call dignitaries in terms of uh, speakers, both uh, state and local and federal, hopefully representatives to come and speak. Um, but I think there does need to be a very coordinated approach that we're trying to figure out exactly who owns that. But. So why don't we just approve 2,000 bucks? So they know we've got something to work with, and I'm pretty sure you'll end up being paid by it. So I will move um, to that effect. Is there a second? Second. All right. Second by Mr. Wood. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? All right, 6-1. Just the opposition is based upon the, the source of the funding? Yeah, basically, yeah. I'm not, I'm not comfortable with it. I wasn't convinced it's not really going to be a budget. I probably so, would vote for you. I mean, if, if somebody else is going to pay for it, I'm all for it. That's fine. You should. But that's I don't think it should come out of the Warren article. Agreed. But I don't think it's going to. Well, and I think you're looking, I think we'll take the same approach to this as we did fitness equipment. Yeah. Well, I think we'll take the same approach to this as we did fitness equipment. I think we'll take the same approach to this as we did fitness equipment. You know, we were able to get, you know, at least on the town side, you know, $5,000 combined from the insurance vendors to help reduce the cost of that. So I think we'll take the same approach, you know, that we did in that bank. It's just very hard to solicit donations when you have to sit here as a sworn committee. Right. So, um, all right. Uh, with that, is there any other business? All right. I'll make a motion adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Goodney. Any further? All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you.